Yo, what's going on, world? This is the J.R. Richmond Show. What's up, y'all? I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. I so, hope, hope y'all enjoyed that show. Yeah, yeah, the last show, man. Really hope y'all enjoyed it. But we back again. <laughs> yeah, back with another one, man. We on. I guess you say, uh, <laughs> Diddy, though, man. What's going on in Diddy's world, though? Was every time I turn around, it's getting crazier and crazier with Diddy, though, man. You know, he had all these allegations going on, and he can't come back from this one, though, man. But right now, nobody really wants to be associated with Diddy, man. His whole house is crumbling. Everything he built up. It's going downhill, man. It's a wrap for Diddy, man. It looks like it, though. You think you think all of it's real, though? Or people just well, for clout? It's a lot of allegations. He had a lot of rumors for years. You know, Jaguar Wright. You know what I mean? Nobody came at her, and she's been saying this for years. She's been calling him, like, Mr. Honeycomb. You know? So all this stuff is, you know, allegedly. Allegedly, there's a lot of allegations going on. It's been reported out of numerous multiple news outlets, you know what I mean? Even major news has been covering this stuff and everything, though, man. Diddy's been getting dropped from his brands left and right. He had to step down from, uh, what's the TV, what's that TV station he owns? A oh, Revolt. He had to step yeah, down from Revolt. He's no longer associated with his liquor brands. He's losing a lot, he's losing a lot of <laughs> endorsements. He was, uh, what's that, uh, what that, 2022, he was worth, uh, one bill. Now he 800 yeah. bill. Well, you know, he had to pay off Cassie. He paid her off faster than Mike Tyson uh, used to box in the 80s. <laughs> it was quick. Was that like 30 mil? I think that yeah, was I think so. And I think yeah. homeboy, what's his name, Lil Rod, he trying to get 30 mil too. Yeah, that's crazy. With his ass too, though, man, what's going on with him? Man, it's All of crazy, crazy thing, man. bro. I guess <laughs> he, he, thought he was really untouchable. He did, though, man. He did, though. It's crazy, though. He had a lot of stuff going on there, though. I wonder if he was doing that, if he was living that persona. Remember back in the day, he was on that, I guess it's that little Kim album? And he used to be like, take that, take that. <laughs> you know? So I wonder, if, I wonder if he had all the, um, all those, allegedly, all those um, uh, rap artists, basically, though, man, and singers, uh, you know, doing a lot of crazy essay and a uh, whole bunch of, what do you call them, freak offs? Oh, yeah. What's going on? Man, God bless the dead, even with um, DMS. When he saying something about, about Diddy, too? I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of the stuff is hearsay. And, you no, know, you know, we weren't there, so we're just going by. We'll be yeah, here. We but. Yeah, don't, yeah, we went there now. We just going by these allegations of what they talking about. It's hot, man. Yeah, no doubt, though, man. But, you know, it's being reported, though, man. So let's just keep this train going on with Diddy, though, man. Let's go ahead and get on the ride, though, man. You know, for the past 30 years of his music career, you know, Diddy has a lot of allegations going on. He built up a great brand. You know, he had the Bad Boy Records. You know, he was doing movies. He had a lot of stuff going on, though, man. But... You know, later on down the line, you know, him and Cassie was had uh, people talking about their relationship. You know, Cassie came out with her stuff and everything, you know, about how he would, um, he essayed her and um, threatened her and he made her feel uncomfortable. And, you know, right. and then there was the whole situation with um, Kid Cuddy and what he did to his vehicle and things well, like that. Right? Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. That's what they said, you know. <laughs> You know, but, you know, it, it just kept on going with Diddy. So, you know, November of 2023, two women sued Diddy for S.A. Shortly after still and Cassie's lawsuit against them for undisclosed sum, Combs was sued again by two women uh, by the name of, it says, Joy Dickerson uh, Neal filed suit in New York Supreme Court on November 23rd, accusing him of drugging her drink on the day of 1991 and S. Ader, her Dickinson Neal says Combs also recorded the incident and showed it to others, making her a victim of uh, revenge uh, porn. Let's take say, let's that, say take corn. that. <laughs> you know, and then uh, December 2023, another woman accused Diddy of um, the R word, her, when she was uh, 17 years old. 
In a new lawsuit filed in December, a third woman came forward with allegations against Holmes once again, filing as Jane Doe in her suit. She claims Holmes and two other men all were her in 2003 when she was 17 years old after picking her up at a club in Detroit. It goes on, you know, in February 2024, a former Diddy producer accused him of S.A. The latest complaint against Combs came from Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Lil Rod, a producer on Combs' 2023 album of the grind, not the grind, Grid. He said while staying with Diddy from September 2022 to November 2023, which is a long time. Now, doesn't usually take that long to be recording the album? I don't, I don't think so, bro. It's a long time, man. It's like, like that's over a year. From September 2022 to November 2023, did he force him to have, you know, sex with uh, prostitutes, threaten and harass him? Combs' attorney right. <laughs> has dismissed all the accusations against him as money grabs, but, you know, everything's on paper. You know, so, so all, this line, all this documented. All this documented. All of his documented. He even got he even got Cuba Gooding uh, Jr. involved with the dirt and uh, you he know so you know too. he had Piece of the Action too. That's great. That's a movie too. I wonder if he was in that movie, Piece of the Action. <laughs> you got Meek Mill, Usher, alleged had, you know, romantic relations with Diddy. According to when uh, according to what reported by WXL magazine, Diddy is a protagonist. Of another uh, media scandal, which also involved Nick Mill and Usher, that he is facing SA and assault lawsuits filed against him by former collaborator, uh, you know, Lil Rod, you know, Lil Rod. But you know, it says right here. In fact, a file of approximately seventy-three pages has been opened against Diddy by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, in which he accused of SA and harassment, along with the boy. Cuba Gooding Jr. So all I this stuff a, on I seen a I seen a um a video like like a couple of years ago with uh with Cuban man. He was up there drunk, stripping on dancing and stripping on the table or something man. at some restaurant, bro. Did he? Yeah. You know, I don't know if he was playing around, but they uh I don't know, uh T M Z I think they uh, linked the video or something like that. What's going on behind them scenes, man? Behind behind Hollywood and the, them back doors, bro. It's, it's it's weird how a lot of these people, all this stuff is coming out now. It all started off with the Cat Williams interview, and now it seems like more doors are opening and it's getting crazy and crazy. And all the allegations, more allegations coming out. Even before this allegation right here, and everything though, and Leslie once again. One of um, Will Smith's, what was his assistant? Yeah. He accused, Will, he accused Dwayne Wade knocking down Will Smith. And all the energy that he was producing, man, seemed like he was jealous. Like he wanted in on the action. <laughs> and now you got this stuff right here with Diddy. And it's just looking ugly for Diddy, though, man. What's the shame, though, man? You know what I mean? Because you got yeah, all that talent, he let that all that power go to his head and everything, though, man. What was the one dude that used to be involved with everything, though, like his mentor? What was his name? Oh, Tom. Andre, Andre Yeah, Harrell? yeah. yeah Andre Harrell. Uh-huh. The legend? Yeah. <laughs> the legend. Uh, what do you think about this, though? What do you think about this whole situation with Diddy, everything going on behind the scenes and all these rumors throughout the years? Take that, take that. That's all I can say, bro. But hey, man, hey, I don't know, man. They, I mean, like I always put it, maybe it's just there to confuse the people because they got, you know, the powers that be got other tricks under their sleeve or whatnot. And I mean, even Ice Cube son was talking about that. Remember that I need a girl song. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, um, more than my girl, we was like brothers. All night used to play fight under the covers, and when you look at the video or whatnot, when he said that, he pointed at uh, him and Usher. Did he, bro? Then you remember that that clip while back, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
when Kevin Hart was interviewing Diddy and Usher was standing there and uh Diddy was like, you know, him and Usher they used to <laughs> they used to wake up in the bed and fight over cornflakes too or whatever. Yeah, That's when, uh, there, bro. Kevin Hart was uh interviewing him everything though. He said, I keep him quiet. Yeah, getting all wild and loud and everything, man. It, it's no telling what's going on behind the scenes, bro. He was even like a lot of this getting exposed. He wasn't even linked to um Justin Bieber. It wasn't back in the day when it was like MTV Cribs and Justin Bieber was over um Diddy's uh, house and Diddy was like you know he has um full access to Justin Bieber staying like what like seventy two hours or like the weekend something like that with him. And then, you know, back in the day, he also had Usher. Usher was, like, what, 12, 14 years old? Yeah, 12. Man, that's with crazy. I don't understand how parents can just let their kids go live with a stranger in that environment, in that world, just to get off for a couple of dollars and be associated with themselves. And Hollywood, the fame, and the glitz and the glamour is more important than taking care of your own responsibilities and letting them pop off for other people out there <laughs> like Diddy. And that, that know, whole man. camp Oh, the world is crazy. It gets you know wild, bro. Like the the parents, bro. You know, like how you were saying, man. They where were they? You know, especially you know, especially what's going on now, man. I believe that you know, if your your child, you know, want to do their thing, or whatever. I mean, go independent. You don't need to send them off to you know whoever. You feel me? Because it's crazy. It get wild out here, bro. But they pimping their children, man. That's what it is. It's sad though. When you think about it though, man. But Very. I guess money. I guess money trumps everything though, man. When you got that greed, that's already you know we call it the green eye monster. It's already set in. That's all they care about or anything though, man. But this whole situation is crazy. Not too much to really say about this, man. The whole entertainment industry is trash. It's filled all the way. Cause it's not even about music anymore, man. It's about propaganda and what, what they can promote and. All that power behind the scenes. It's like now a lot of these people seem like they're they're comfortable with it. They're comfortable doing the things that are coming out of all these allegations, rumors, and all these rap artists and musicians and singers and actors and politicians. It, the list keeps on going. And everything though, man. It, it doesn't matter what color you are. They're all involved with it. It's all one big giant cesspool of trash. <laughs> and they're comfortable with it, kind of thing, though. And it's, it's going to keep on going on and on and on because more people just like he for Steve Harvey. He even said it. It's not about no integrity, you know. So you know who knows what he's doing behind the scenes, man. It makes you know, so cool, now it's just about getting that dollar. Steve Nay Smith from ESPN. He's like the face of ESPN. He said he's trying to figure out how can he make his bosses more money each and every single day that he gets up to go to work. You know, so it's about all that, all that wild like that, though. Just what it seems like. A lot of people don't even care. A lot of them don't care. So right now, it's just about the money dollar instead of integrity and hold. And what they say, standing on business. I guess they're standing on business, like you know, standing up, taking it, bend over, taking them back, take that, take that, <laughs> take that, you know? take that. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I guess. On hey, what, what, what you what you think about Monique, man? Monique got a lot of anger. A lot of anger. She got a lot of anger, though, man. She's been wronged and she's been humiliated, and right now she just seems like she was lost and broken. She don't know what to do. She like she's crying and complaining about Hollywood, and she don't, you know. And at the same time, it's like she wants to be in that circle, but at the same time, it's like she wants to be on top. She wants to be running it her own way, but she still wants to be part of that circle. So it, it's, it's weird how she's, like, operating, though, man, because as talented as she is, I don't think she's really that funny. You know, oh, now every time she goes out, it doesn't even seem like she's telling jokes. It just seems like she's just talking about she's people. Angry. So, like, yeah, are you going to tell a joke or are you just going to be talking about people for, like, 40 minutes? So hmm. my whole thing is this. Just do what you do. If you if you that talented, you say that you're this, you're that. You know, Queens of Comedy was all this, and it was the number one this, number one that, and all these women that need to get together. They go out there and do it. Show them what you're worth. Show them what you can do and produce. 
instead of complaining all day and everything. But you said what you said, though. We're not going to beat the machine. Hollywood, the entertainment world, that's the machine. And she's not part of it right now, though, man. So she bit the hand and fed her, you know, because she didn't want to do certain things. I commend her on that, though, man. You know, she stood on, she stood on her own big bit and did what she wanted to do, you know. So, I get, I salute her. He's, all the props in the world to her and everything, though, man. But at the same time, she still seems like she wants to be part of that world, though, man. So, so right now, she can go ahead and start her own little YouTube channel. She can go ahead and get a podcast and do things like that and be set up. We'll be done with it, though, man. Just go, go ahead and travel the country. Yeah, go ahead and print it. Go out there. Hit the comedy circuit. Do some, um, uh, whatever, though, man. Because right now, it's all about technology. This is the world of information. It's the world of technology, man. So those are technology age. Those are like she wants to. She still seem like she wants help. <laughs> Want a handout, huh? It seems like, like though, man. You know how it is, man. Like I say, man, it's probably all in the, all in the plan of the, the ones that so called higher up, man. It seems like the higher you go, the darker it gets, though, man. So, it's no telling. At one man. point, you want. At one point, you want to be a rapper, though, man. What What was it like in that world, though, man? Like being a rapper, artist, though, man. I mean, I know you. You said you know you did a couple concerts and things like that. How was how did it feel, man? How how was that that those interactions when we came across certain people in the industry? Well, back then I ain't really get too deep in it, but back then you know I was passionate about what I wanted to do. So I don't know where all that all that weird stuff started kicking in, though. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I wasn't that deep in it, but yeah, I had a uh, you know. Talk with certain people, you know what I'm saying? Did my thing or whatnot, but I just ain't never like if that was presented to me <laughs> on that on that lifestyle, like what Diddy and all them doing, man. That <laughs> that'll be a route, bro. So I'm glad, you know what I'm saying. I didn't, you know, go no further in it though, man. Cause why well, ain't no telling, man. I'll probably be in jail or something right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, straight up. I don't see how these fold. I mean, you need money that you need money that bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, is it is it that bad that you're willing to sell your soul and how that how your country's eating you? You know what I'm saying? You're in front of your kids with your wife and everything, and you thinking about that all day and night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dirty that's why you all that's why you all you know it all. Uh, what they call it? What they call it for the um for the other folks? They call it the um recreational. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's why all of them like on recreational drugs and oh, things yeah, like yeah. that. That nature. But it's only a certain color that they that they say now. Huh? That's on recreational yeah. drugs because of this Danny Third. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, so. That's why I love them to go sloppy like that, though, man. Because that conscious, that guilt and everything, though, is eating away at them, though. Know? Yeah, bro. You know, they, they, stay, they stay sauced up and and everything else they got going on. And it's, it's sad, though, man, because mentally they're, they're, not, they're not there anymore, though, man. They're like a shell. What they say? They're like a shell themselves. Right. But I don't know, like, I don't know why. Well, what, what makes your mind go there that you can go ahead and lay down with the same thing as what you are to just go ahead and just do, just do a record or be in a film or just anything? Can you imagine going to a supermarket and it's like, you know, you want like eight eggs. You want, you want, you want 12. You want a dozen. And you're like, hey, right. there's only six eggs in here. You know, and, and, and the man can come out from the back and be like, well, if you want, you know, if you want a full dozen eggs, you know, you got to do something for me in the back. <laughs> you imagine the world is operating like that. If you want to get your car fixed, you got the service. You got service mechanic <laughs> in his own way. <laughs> just, just to get your car fixed. Just to get something that you need done. And you got to do something for you got to You know, you got to do me a favor. Hey, come on over here in the so, back, girl. I got something for you. Come on real quick. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's to the point that it ain't about the money no more, huh? Nah, man. It's just about power and what, what, how, how much you can degrade yourself. Man. Yeah, they can have that, but I'm telling you. Well, at the end of the day, you are who you are, man. You got to live with your acting if you uh, play it up for your own self and everything, though, man. But it's definitely something that 
no normal person can really get down with, though, man. But the more these people do it, the more they're going to accept it, the more these people are going to keep putting it out there and pushing it. You know what I mean? So that's power. And you and all the people right now are puppets. Yeah, that's what they are. Man, what's up with uh, with Meat Mills, man? Why are you trying to deny what's going on? I don't know, man. You know, they got him on black and white and everything, though. So, you know, he's he claiming that he's a gangster, but he don't want to, you know, he don't want to admit that, you know, he was touching his toes. <laughs> What's ever in the dark should come to the light, man. Oh. Well, hey, it was, <laughs> I guess I guess he took the whole, he took that, uh, his state, Monica, <laughs> to heart, right? Because, you know, what do you say, um, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Brotherly love. And so, you know, if him and uh, if him and Diddy did what they said they did, then hey, that's that's brotherly love right there, man. Him and Diddy. Wow. So, oh, that's crazy. So, but as time goes on, I think we had restart Pete for the oh, day. Yeah. And then you want to say before we get off, though. What, what would you say to all these up-and-coming entertainers that want to go ahead and make it into this business on the next higher level? Mm-hmm. What would you tell them right now, though, man? Man, I say independent is the way to go, man. That's the best. That's the best advice I can give. I mean, look at the old, the one that came before y'all, man. The Frankie Lyman and then, um, New Edition and all that. You seen how in TLC? You feel me? And the list goes on. You seen how them, um, the big record labels had burnt them. You feel me? So, independence is the way to go. Get your people. You know, that rock with you. You know, get a channel. You know, it's a lot of inform- um, a lot of, a lot of good 401 that's out to, um, to get hurt. And just market your own stuff, man. I mean, if you want to do some distribution deals or whatever, I guess that's cool. Just make sure you read that contract, whatever in that contract, though. But, yeah, independent, man. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. There it is. I'm John. It's raw, man. So, y'all stay tuned in. This is the J.R. Richmond Show.